Welcome traders to today's e mini SP introductory session uh, with me, Patrick Munley. We're just going to give it another 30 seconds here before we uh, get going with today's content. Okay, so uh, welcome to today's introduction to the e mini and micro S&P contracts. In today's session, I'll be introducing you to the instruments, structure and advantages, along with highlighting some unique market mechanics that enhance the trading information for the product. I will also introduce you to my core strategy for trading the E-minis and demonstrate how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns. But before we get going, I just want to do a quick audio check. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you could type out Y in the chat box, and I'll know that, uh, that we are good to go. Okay, so for those of you who are here for uh, the first time, just a brief introduction uh, to myself. Like I say, my name is Patrick Manley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing uh, people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some cap capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out. As the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, I upped not just my technical gain, developing strategies that crucially uh, suited my personality, researching and developing extensively back and forward testing these strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental gain. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading in it being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed accounts vehicle, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. In 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. My other passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into uh, today's material. 
So the E-mini or E-micro is a futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. It's traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME, via their Globex trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week, using the contract symbol ES. E-mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities and Forex currencies. However, when traders refer to the E-mini or the E-minis or the SPOOs, they are generally referring to the most important one, the futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. E-mini futures were originally launched in September 97 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P contract, but it had become too expensive for the little guy to trade. So the CMA created the E-mini contract, which was one fifth the size of the large S&P futures contract and required, more importantly, only one fifth of the margin to trade. The E-mini became a huge success, not only with non-professional traders, but with professional traders too. The micro E-mini futures contract is the same as the regular S&P E-mini contract in every respect, except it's one tenth the size. That is, each one point move in the S&P 500 index is worth $5 per micro E-mini contract compared to the US uh, to, to the $50 for the E-minis. And the margin to trade the micro E-mini contract is also one tenth the size. So what are the benefits? Well, it's equally easy to go long and short. You either buy or sell the current E-mini contract and there is no uptick rule. 24 hour trading, which makes the e mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE can be played with one trading vehicle. The electronic trading platform means that your orders are entered instantaneously, and when executed, you're notified instantaneously. Changing and cancelling orders is trivial. There's no phone call to your broker required, and you know exactly where you stand at every second you're in a trade. There's a it's a level playing field. The Globex Electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market and trades are executed in the order they are received, unlike pit traded futures or equities. There are no backroom games that can be played. There's a tight bid ask spread because there's so much volume trading through the E-mini. The difference between the bid and the ask price is only ever one tick or 0.25 index points, which is the absolute minimum movement. The large depth of market means that the E-mini is so liquid, there is plenty of volume either side of the last traded price for large orders to be filled with minimum slippage. It's volatile, yes, but not unmanageable. The E-mini is active every day, which gives the trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, a sleepy market is impossible to day trade, but the E-mini volatility is also manageable, except around major news announcements or geopolitical uh, situations, FOMC, presidential elections, etc. Most importantly though, there's a very low brokerage rates. Broker commissions for trading E-minis continue to fall. This excludes uh, exchange clearing and regulatory fees. And when you factor those in, your round trip in and out brokerage commission is very attractive. Low mar margin requirements, trade the E-micro means that to open a trading position with Tickmill, you only require 1,000 US dollars to open a micro account. Remember, these are the absolute minimums you should be trading with, uh, much more capital behind your positions. A lower tax rate than trading Forex or stocks. Uh, income from trading e-mini futures in the UK is taxed as a capital gain as long as it isn't your primary source of income. There's no trade by trade accounting. Another advantage of the tax treatment of e-mini futures is the tax reporting requirements are minimal. In particular, no trade by trade accounting is required, only the net profit for the full year is needed. So now we understand the instruments and the trading venue, I want to demonstrate some of the unique aspects uh, of, this, uh, of this particular instrument. The fact that the E-mini is a derivative of the S&P 500 allows us to access some unique information commonly referred to as market internals. Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on a car, giving indication of performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. So let's take a look more closely now at what market internals are and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. Firstly, volume. As a unique features of the trading, the exchange traded derivative, 
derivative as opposed to CFDs or Forex. Volume data for Forex is notoriously incomplete. There is no central Forex exchange and the banks who dominate Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of actual volume, which is shared directly by the CME available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the market. Spikes in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. The next tool that I use is the NYSE tick index. This gives us the relationships of stocks up ticking versus down ticking. The tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday trading. For example, if there are 3,000 stocks trading on the NYSE and 1,500 trade higher from their previous price and 500 trade lower than their last price, the tick will read plus 1,000. But what about the other 1,000 stocks, you say? Well, that could be that their price is unchanged from the last quoted price. When using the tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit a trade. Tick readings of plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong as we typically trade between 1,000 most of the time on the NYSE. Tick readings within the 400 range indicate chop and we ignore them. On a range day, we can look to fade tick extremes. I apply a moving average uh, to make it easier to see the tick distribution on any, on any given day. When we get a high tick of day and a high in price at the exact same time, this often indicates a high of the day. When a high tick prints without a simultaneous high in price, we can continue to make new highs until a new high tick is reached. And the reverse is true for the low tick of day followed by new lows. Next, the advanced decline line, or AD line for short, is the second most important of the internals. This indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. There are roughly 3,000 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange and 3,000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of 1,500 plus is very bullish and a reading of over 2,000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, readings of negative 1,500 and below are very bearish and readings below 2,000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are indicative of trending days where once the market continues to trend all the way into the close, we look to the AD line in conjunction with the breadth ratio to confirm these trend days. So for example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks would yield a net plus 2,000, which is an extremely bullish reading. It would take a large catalyst to shift the market direction with a reading this bullish. If on the open, you can continue to see the AD, AD line moving plus 500, plus 700, plus 900. This is a sign of market strength. If, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, a divergence has occurred and could be a sign for a market reversal. Last, but no means least, is the breadth volume ratio, composed of volume flowing into up stocks versus volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth ratio is expressed up volume minus down volume. This reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are now compared to where we open the day. For example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio is two to one positive. Twice as much volume is flowing into up stocks as down stocks. If at 10.30 a.m. the market is sold off, but we now have a breadth ratio of three to one positive, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to buy pullbacks, so looking for long setups. So now we understand uh, market internals and the unique insight they provide, I want to briefly walk you through my core strategy. By understanding the market context in which we are trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades. Firstly, mean reversion trades in ranging environments and momentum trades in trending environments underpinned by the market internals. Every day I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas that are derived from multi-time frame market auction theory and volume profile analysis. This allows me to avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop. The support and resistance action areas have three purposes. They can act as entry levels in mean reversion setups, which is the majority of the time. 
In directional or trend environments, the action areas act to confirm momentum entries. And lastly, they can be used as targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day's price action. These levels are often important to define the bias for the current day. The previous volume point of control, the highest volume uh, price from the previous day where buyers and sellers perceive the, the price to be fair value for the day. I confirm the current market context. This confirms the dominant side of the market in the near term over the one to, one to three day time horizon, uh, uh, medium term one to three weeks time horizon and long term one to three months. These are, <laughs> there are times when neither side is dominant and it's important to assess how the cash session develops. I also highlight quantitative probability plays based on where the cash session uh, or the cash or the regular trading hours session opens in relation to the prior days uh, either above, below or in range based on key levels and the probability of price testing these levels over an extended data set. This can prove very useful for trade entry, exit and management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis, as this helps to inform the current market context. Is the market in balance in relation to current volatility? Equally, we can confirm a market out of balance, and this can inform the bias for the trading day ahead. It also helps to inform trade execution and management. So now we, you understand, have a basic understanding of uh, how I'm using uh, this approach. What I'm going to do is walk you through uh, some examples uh, from, uh, from recent trade activity. So uh, here was the setup for the day. We came into the day uh, with a bearish bias. We, uh, we were looking for, uh, see the Globex tone. So the overnight trade from when the previous cash session closed to the, to the open of the current cash session, we had a bearish bias. We had a neutral near-term bias, which meant that we could either play it from the long or the short side. In this instance, what I was looking for was a pullback into this primary resistance zone as highlighted by this uh, red, uh, red rectangle. And when we got into this area, what I wanted to do was pay attention to the internals to see if we were seeing a pullback in a dominant move to the downside. And when we got up into this area, we can see that there was divergence, the internals were trending lower, the tick distribution was negative. And so that was a signal to enter short positions um, targeting the, uh, the Globex lows or the primary support area. And in that instance, you had a setup that delivered 18.5 points from the, uh, from the resistance zone. And these are all highlighted in, uh, in my daily pre-market analysis. So this isn't, you don't get these levels after the fact. I provide this ahead of the market open. Um, normally by, by, I post uh, my pre-market analysis uh, between 2 and 2.15 uh, UK time, and then the market opens at 2.30. So in this instance here, uh, came into the day bearish. The overnight price action was bearish. We were neutral to bearish in the near term. What I said uh, in my pre-market analysis on that day was that we wanted to watch how we traded out of the open. If we didn't, re if we didn't get a test of the Globex lows, and we saw responsive buying as highlighted by the volume here, and we were getting positive internals straight out of the open. The trade for me was to play a, what I call a continuation or a momentum trade through the primary resistance zone. And in that instance, we got a move that achieved the 10 point target because once we enter that trade, we're immediately looking to uh, target the next resistance zone. Here we came into the day with a bearish Globex tone and a bearish, um, bearish near-term bias. And so what we were looking for was to play a break of the primary support. This is the primary support area highlighted here. And so we came out of the gate. We had a, a breadth and AD line were both below zero. So that was telling us that the, the internals were negative and deteriorating. And we had a negative distribution in terms of the tick. So we simply played the break of the primary support. We take it down to the secondary support. We didn't get any internal exhaustion signals. And when I refer to an exhaustion signal, I mean an, a, a tick extreme on a new low of day. So we held the position to pay for a test of the, the tertiary support for the day and exit positions there, uh, risking 7.5 points to, uh, to gain 28 points. 
So in this instance, we had another one of those setups whereby we were looking for a pullback into primary resistance. We came into the day bearish uh, and neutral uh, on, the, on the daily timeframe. So that would allow us, if we got the negative uh, internals, to fade the resistance zone, the initial resistance zone. And in this instance, we traded up into the resistance zone. And once again, we had the divergence here. We had breadth below the zero line and deteriorating. We had the AD line well below the zero line and deteriorating. And we had a negative tick distribution. And we, the, the rise out of the gates here was on very low volume, which suggested there was little conviction behind the move to the upside. So that was a signal to short the uh, resistance zone. And this trade provided 16 points in profit as we test the primary uh, support zone. <clears throat> Another example here, we came into the day um, bearish on uh, the overnight session, bearish on the, the one to three day objective. And uh, we were looking for a breakdown uh, once we test into the primary resistance. Again, we test into primary resistance. We've got those negative internals both the breadth and AD line are below zero and the tick distribution is below its zero line. So that's suggesting weakness. And so when we trade up into the primary resistance zone, we set short positions and we traded through to the second target on that day uh, and there were anywhere between 30 or 40 points of profit, depending upon where you entered at the resistance zone. So those are a couple of, uh, or those are a bunch of examples there of recent trades. I'll actually pull up now the, uh, this is the, the chart template. When you, uh, when you join the strategy group, you are able to access this chart template in real time uh, through trading view. This is, uh, this is going back to uh, just last week. Another bunch of examples here. Um, these, uh, this one, we were looking for a break of the primary support that we got and took us down for 14 and a half points profit. Uh, this day, we were looking for a break of support, which we got. But what we noticed once we got into this trade was as we were testing uh, support, we were actually seeing a positive tick distribution develop and we had significant momentum divergence into these lows. And so in that instance, the trade was in profit and I simply suggested we move our, our stops to entry and we were, uh, we were taken out there risk-free. Came into this day, uh, in the pre-market analysis, I was looking for um, longs through the primary resistance at, uh, at the open, which is what we got. And then we had a measured move objective, uh, 41.42 was the target on the trade. And so we, uh, we took that up into the target um, and we got an exhaustion signal there with a high tick of day, high end price, and that was the signal to cover. And we took 19 points in profit from that trade. Um, no trades uh, on the 21st of May. Let's see what we got here. So came into the day bullish. High probability trade was long through primary resistance, targeting the equality of objective at 42.03. And again, that provided 17 points of profit there uh, on the break through the primary resistance with those positive internals confirming. And this is just yesterday. Uh, we came into the day, we actually came into the day bullish yesterday, looking for, uh, looking for a break of primary resistance to set up a move basically to retest all time highs. Uh, we didn't get that trade and we, we started to roll over. And as we did, I highlighted that uh, <coughs> the, the, the trade was going to be the, uh, the short trade through the primary support, looking for a test of uh, the secondary support zone. And, uh, and we got a move down into that area and booked eight points profit on that trade. Um, just in a, if, if shortly before we wrap this up, I'll, uh, I'll review the setup for today and talk you through what I'm looking for in terms of today's price action. I'll just also introduce you to, this is the, uh, the tick mill uh, futures and, and options, the, the strategy group. This is where I post the uh, trading analysis. I also update uh, trades as price action develops uh, throughout the session. I'm generally looking, I'm looking to take one, uh, one or two trades a day. I'm not, I'm not actively uh, scalping the market, so to speak. I do have a, an automated algorithm that is a, a bit more aggressive in terms of uh, being in and out of the market. That's uh, a passive income stream really for me. But what I'm sharing with you here in terms of the, the pre-market analysis is what underpins that algorithm, uh, which I've been using for, uh, for the past 12 years now. So there's, um, you get the pre-market analysis where I define the 
the setups going into the day, I'm very specific about what it is I'm looking to, to do in the market. And like I say, I provide updates. Uh, I also provide institutional information as well uh, through uh, institutional notes that give broader context to what's going on in the markets. And, um, and I, I, like I say, I update trading positions as and when. Um, what we're offering basically is a two week free trial to everyone who's here today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the, uh, the group information into the chat. Uh, you can uh, follow that up on Facebook and you can ask, uh, ask for membership and we'll provide you with a two week free trial. So you can get a flavor of what it is uh, we offer in terms of the pre-market analysis and how effective it is uh, as uh, over that two weeks, which should be sufficient for you to see uh, the efficacy of what it is uh, we provide. So going into today, let's, uh, let's take a look at the market as we set up. So I'm, uh, we're bullish on all timeframes at the moment. So the trade for me will be a break uh, higher here through 42.18 today is what I'm looking for. If we can, <coughs> if we can get through 42.18 and we've got strong market internals, so we want to see a very positive AD line, very positive breath, positive tick distribution. Um, we look to play the break of 42.18.25 25 to target all time highs at 42.38. And so with this trade, what I'll be watching for, one, if I get the, the entry signal, um, I'll be watching as we develop, are we seeing any signs of exhaustion as the trade is underway? If we do, and when I refer to exhaustion, I mean a high tick of day with a new high in price, what I will look to do at that instance will be to move my stops to entry, and I'll just see if I can trail up to get the test of the uh, prior all-time highs at 42.38. So that's the primary trade for me today. That's the one that I'll be looking for as we head into the cash session. Obviously, what's important is I need those internals to confirm the, the underlying strength of the market to set that position up. Alternatively, if we come into the day and we see responsive selling from the open, then what I look for will be a move to test support down to uh, 41.79, 41.82. If we get exhaustion signals there, so a new low in price on the day, a, a new low tick, a tick extreme, and a volume spike, I would, would look to set long positions to target the primary resistance on the upside. Equally, if we don't find responsive uh, buyers there as we head into today's session, then what I would look for is if we trade down into this support area and we've got very weak internal, so the AD line below zero, the breadth below zero, and a negative tick distribution, I'd actually look to set short positions through uh, 41.79, initially targeting uh, 41.68 to uh, 41.64. Again, watching for exhaustion signals there to take profit. If we don't get exhaustion, if we don't get an exhaustion signal there, then I'd look to hold the position to trade down to 41.47, uh, 41.41 on the on the downside. So those are the two, there are basically two trades for me today. It's either going to be playing the uh, momentum break to the top side here or a momentum break to the downside. So that, uh, that concludes my overview of the, uh, the E-mini micro contract and the Tickmill Futures and Options Strategy Group, which I hope uh, you'll take advantage of the two week free trial there to, uh, to follow along with my pre-market analysis and my intraday updates, um, demonstrating how you can consistently uh, reap positive returns using the action areas as I, out, as I outline them before the market opens, and then just understanding and becoming familiar with how these internals can give you the information as to whether or not we're, we're in a market that has underlying strength or has underlying weakness. Um, are, there, uh, are there any questions? I'm, uh, I've got a few minutes here for any questions. If you want to type them into the chat box, you can do so, or there's a Q&A box there, you can, uh, you can type it in there. Or if you've got a microphone and uh, I can unmute your mic and you can ask, you can ask me directly. Equally, if, that, if you don't have a question, typing an N in the chat box is just as useful uh, so I know that uh, I've done a reasonably competent job of explaining all of this. Uh, it's it's a it's commission. It's a commission. Um, 
Uh, for Islamic account, I don't know. I'll, um, uh, can you, actually I'll put a, um, if you want to follow up with uh, customer, uh, client services, I'll just, their email address is there. It's client services at tickmill.co.uk. Put that into. Um, can you see the Facebook uh, link that I've put above there, Masood? It's in the chat. Let me just uh, put that back in here. Oops. Bear with me. Um, there we go. There's the link again. So if you just hit that link and you just ask to, to join the group and, uh, and you'll be approved and you get the two week free trial. Um, and then for clients, uh, let me just type this in. And there's the client services address to inquire about the Islamic accounts. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this up here. Thanks for your time. I hope you found this useful and I hope to see you uh, in the strategy group. Thanks very much, everyone.